Uh, so I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Uh, Patrick Jenkins from the University System of Georgia up to the podium. Patrick has spent over 20 years in IT security audit and compliance industry. He began his career at Georgia Tech, serving in the, in the multiple areas, including the Department of Internal Auditing. After 17 years with the Institute, Patrick continued his career at Equifax, where he served as Director of Global Security Compliance and PCI ISA for three years. In October 2014, Patrick returned to higher education and is serving as the Director of IT Audit for the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia. So we get to see him a couple times a year. Patrick holds several auditing and security industry certifications, including the CISA and PCIP. Patrick earned his undergrad and mas undergraduate and master's degree from Kennesaw State University, so one of our own. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm case. You welcome to Mr. Patrick Jenkins. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Wow. Yes, sir. Well, good morning. Careful not to breathe in this sound like Darth Vader. So it's good to be home at uh, Kennesaw State. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, like Chris said, I'm, I'm a double owl. I got my undergrad in uh, information systems here and uh, my master's, my MPA in information systems here. And I uh, see uh, Dr. Mattered is going to be speaking later today. I had several classes with him, and so uh, those are a lot of fun. <laughs> So I want to talk a little bit today about identity theft, um, and mainly, you know, how it happens, what you can do to remediate it. And so uh, we'll get some really personal stories in here as well that you can hopefully relate to. So I'll uh, forgo the extra introduction, except that uh, I do like pina coladas, getting caught in the rain, and all that fun stuff. A slow crowd this morning, I think. So what is identity theft, right? It's, it is really no different than, than any other theft. It's, it's taking something that doesn't belong to you. Um, it is the assumption of somebody else's identity for a nefarious purpose, such as getting credit for illegal purchases, uh, credit cards from brokers and retailers, uh, stealing money from existing accounts or even setting up new accounts, renting apartments or setting up fraudulent mortgages. I'll talk to you all a little bit more about that too. Uh, applying for loans, any kind, any kind of loan. Uh, filing fraudulent tax returns with the IRS and the state government. Uh, or, you know, using it to establish any other kind of account in someone else's name. Uh, let's be very clear, it, it is illegal to do this. It's illegal under state law and federal law. So, um, so of course, this being an academic educational institution, we got to throw statistics at you, right? So here's the obligatory statistics slide. Um, this is a report that's released from the Department of Justice. They release it every two years, and it talks about the statistics of identity theft. So these are the numbers for 2014. They haven't released the ones uh, for this year, although that report should be coming pretty soon. But this is the most recent report from the DOJ, and 7% of people 16 years or older have been victims of ID theft. 86% uh, were involved in the fraudulent use of uh, credit cards or bank cards. Uh, notice a lot of y'all probably on your most recent credit card or bank card have a chip embedded in it now versus just the post and mag stripes. That's, that's there to kind of, well, to attempt to combat some of these issues. Uh, the good news is 50% of the victims were able to identify this and have this remediated within a day, give or take. Um, you know, some a significant group of folks uh, had emotional distress over this, so it really caused some angst and some, some gut-wrenching and some heartache over this. Um, one thing that, one stat that did go up from the last report in 2012 is the number of elderly victims uh, in this report. That is probably due to some of the nature of, of the, uh, the attacks. Um, losses were, were down to $15 billion. That's still not chump change, though, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty significant. So uh, it's, it's a serious issue. So let's, you know, of course, everybody likes to hear war stories. And who's familiar with the Target breach, right? Credit cards. Home Depot, very similar breach. 
both cases, their payment card systems were compromised and credit card information was leaked. Uh, Neiman Marcus, very similar. Um, Staples had their payment systems. I guess it really was that easy. <laughs> uh, Sony, if anybody has a PlayStation, right? Sony, Sony's network got compromised. It was pretty significant. Uh, just here recently, Wendy's. Who eats at the Wendy's across the street over there? Yeah, I, I don't. Um, actually, I do quite a bit. Um, but Wendy's uh, was compromised earlier this year. Matter of fact, it's, it's, it was in the news uh, just the other day that uh, <clears throat> uh, certain credit lenders in the state of Michigan are no longer accepting credit card payments from Wendy's. Uh, so you can imagine what that's doing to their revenue in, in Michigan. Um, Ashley Madison, anybody involved with that? Yes, no, show of hands? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Um, they got compromised. <laughs> One in the back there. Thank you. Um, the Office of Personnel Management. This was a this was a significant one because it involved the federal government. Uh, so basically, the identity information for all of our FBI agents, TSA agents, some of our CIO folks, you know, uh, were, was compromised. So that's probably uh, somewhat risky. And of course, here recently, Yahoo subject a, a pretty massive breach. They're still trying to assess the full scope of this breach, but it's, it's pretty involved. So if you have a Yahoo email account, you know, reset your password. Um, let's talk a little bit more about our industry, higher education or education in general. Uh, privacyrights.org is a pretty good website for looking at statistics. So by the way, if any of y'all are studying under Dr. Matter or Dr. Whitman and you gotta do a paper for hacking statistics, it's a good resource. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not Wikipedia. But it shows just in the last you know, five years, they have a recorded uh, number of almost 200 breaches, uh, totaling you know, over five, well over five million records. Well, that's, that's you guys, that's, that's students. Speaking of students, let's talk about a little bit about the cost of this. I'm not picking on Penn State because there are certainly other schools that we could have thrown in here, but they're not a USG school, so I'm gonna pick on them a little bit. Uh, Penn State had a major breach uh, back in 2014, and they first reported on it in May 2015. And uh, their liberal arts college, their college of engineering were really some of the, the targets on this attack. And um, they had to notify 18,000 users. Now, Penn, Penn State University has, you know, the Happy Valley campus has, what, almost 50,000 students. So a significant portion of those students were told that you have to change your IDs and passwords. Most of them were faculty and staff, but a significant amount of students were involved. Um, according to the FBI, who were the ones who notified Penn State, the origin was uh, China, and they do think it was probably state-sponsored. Um, right now, according to Penn State, the cost to remediate these things has been uh, almost $3 million. So think of Kennesaw State for a second. Think of how many students you have. Think of your budgets here at Kennesaw State. Could Kennesaw State take a $3 million hit? Could any one of the schools within the USG, except for maybe UGA and Tech or State, take a $3 million hit? Well, probably not, so there's some pretty high risk there. And by the way, most breach insurance won't cover that, so. A more recent data breach that hit close to home. Who here is actually an employee besides me? Okay, Who, uh, who's been here more than two years? Okay, who had your health care with Blue Cross Blue Shield? Okay. Congratulations, you're among the elite club of having your identity hacked. Uh, the Han Anthem data breach uh, that occurred in 2014 was, uh, was pretty interesting. In fact, uh, they were very quickly quick to say that, hey, our, our medical information had not been breached. That's because they keep their medical information in a separate database. Anthem kept its customer information, including your information, your spouse's information, your kid's information, in a customer database, which was attacked and successfully breached, and the data was walked out. So that's names, addresses, social security numbers, all the kinds of personally identifiable information that walked out the door. And so that was, that was a direct attack on the database. They didn't come in through the application, they attacked the database directly. And so there are controls that could have potentially thwarted this, and I'm not you know, trying to blame to put too much blame on Anthem here because, you know, after all, they were the victims, but there were certain controls that possibly could have been in place that would have prevented this, such as back-end data encryption and whatnot. So, 
that remains to be seen. I think the, the, the autopsy on this is still not completely done. So it'll be interesting to read uh, what the final results on that are. But it did affect everybody within the university system of Georgia who is employed, who has your health coverage through Blue Cross Blue Shield. So what does the face of identity theft look like? I mean, if, if you think of a victim or, or what, what, what truly does, is, is, the, is, if you think about this for a second, what is the face of identity theft? It's a really ugly person, right? And that's, that's really what you look like after your identity's been stolen. Uh, yeah, that, that is my ugly mug. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, I lost my wallet in Atlanta. Matter of fact, I had just moved back to the University System of Georgia. I was putting some stuff in my office and uh, uh, late one evening, and I, as I came out of the building, my wallet fell out of my, uh, my pants. And so in it was my driver's license, my concealed firearms permit, two credit cards, a debit card, my Kroger rewards card. Ah, that was hard to get replaced. So they were gone. Within 12 hours of me losing my wallet, somebody was already using it. They promptly went to the MARTA station at Five Points and bought $60 in MARTA tokens and headed up to Linux Mall where they went on a shopping spree. Um, they opened up accounts in my name at Foot Locker and Verizon. Verizon blocked them, of course, because I already have a Verizon account, but uh, supposedly I have an account with Foot Locker. I haven't been getting any good discounts, but that's what they did. And so they, they, uh, they hit my uh, checking account uh, for about 60 bucks. They hit you know, a couple of charges on my credit card, which I was able to get reversed. Um, the debit card is, is interesting. That debit card does, didn't draw on my primary checking account. I have a separate checking account with a separate bank that is what I use for incidental purchases. I never keep more than about 100 bucks on there. So if, I'm gonna, if somebody's going to rob me, they're not going to get my primary checking account. So it's kind of a way I tried to mitigate some of those risks and, and basically cut my losses. Uh, the credit cards are usually pretty easy to deal with because you can dispute those. That's part of your rights as a credit card holder. Debit cards are a little bit more dangerous. <clears throat> and I still haven't recovered the Kroger Rewards card. I probably lost $20 in gas savings when that thing went. Uh, but more concerned I was, was, was with, my, was with my, uh, my driver's license and my firearms permit. Uh, they didn't get my firearm, but they got my permit. So I uh, had to be careful with that. So, someone stole your identity. What do you do? How do you deal with this? This is, it's not pleasant. Um, so first of all, don't panic. What did our statistics show? Literally millions of people get hit with this every day. I will say this, it is probably one of the most democratic forms of, of theft. It doesn't matter what your skin color is, what your orientation is, what your politics are, they're gonna steal everybody's information. So it is, it's, very, it's very fair in that sense, but it does affect everybody. Uh, you're not the first, and you certainly won't be the last until we unplug everything from the internet. Oh no, wait, it doesn't affect just electronic things. People throw stuff in the trash all the time, right? So yeah, unplugging everything won't work. Uh, you do have rights, and as an American, now I'm sure you do as a Euro if you're a European or Canadian, but as a U.S. citizen, you have rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. You will get through this. You absolutely will get through this. And being prepared, like most things, being prepared makes a huge difference in the amount of damage you're going to incur. So how did it happen? Well, like we talked about, it could have been multiple avenues. There are, there are basically two vectors. There's the, there's the direct vector and the indirect vector. A direct vector is somebody's actually going after you personally. Stolen wallet, stolen purse, stolen mail from a mailbox. I mean, we, we've seen that quite a bit, actually. Papers from the trash can, hey, you didn't shred it properly. Uh, even if you did shred it, you didn't quite shred it as good as you could. It's a great story. Uh, a couple of years ago in New York City where they have the, the, the ticker tape parades. And I can't remember which New York team won. I think it was the, had the Mets won the World Series recently or maybe the Giants. It was the, I know it was. It's when the Giants won the Super Bowl. That ticker tape parade in New York, the company that contracted for the confetti had all this great confetti. They were a shredding company. Well, instead of using cross-cut shreddings, they used regular linear shreds. And one of their biggest vendors was the New York Police Department. So they literally rained down almost intact police reports during this ticker tape parade, which if you went by down and picked them up, oh yeah, you got all that wonderful information. 
That's a true story. You can Google that. Um, stolen smartphones. Who's had their smartphone stolen? Didn't have a pin on it, right? Yeah. Uh, credit card, debit card, restaurant, store, ATM, skimmers, right? Uh, it's interesting. If you go out of country, if you use your credit card at a restaurant, usually they will bring the payment terminal to you and you swipe it in front of them. Here in America, no. Your card walks off somewhere and it's gone. You don't see it. And in the meantime, you can't tell if that person, that, that really great service person that, 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 that brought you, you know, extra dessert. Oh, yeah, by the way, they've got a skimmer in their hand. They just stole your credit card information. Um, an unethical relative. We've seen this in several cases when I was at Equifax. Uh, uncles stealing nieces or nephews identity. Mothers stealing their kids identity for, for whatever reason. Uh, piece together through social media genealogy website. For all the people that, that do, do genealogy research, what's one of the most common questions you get as a security question? What's your mother's maiden name, right? right. Easy to pick up on, on, on certain websites like Ancestry.com. Not that I'm, I'm a big user of Ancestry.com, but uh, I don't use that as one of my security questions. Um, you know, d different other social media. It's amazing what people put out on social media these days. Uh, then there's indirect theft, you know, corporate security breaches like we just talked about, like the, the Targets, the Home Depots, the Wendy's, uh, the Blue Cross Blue Shields, spear phishing email. I don't know if y'all read the news, but one of our USG schools recently got, uh, were victims of a, of a pretty elaborate spear phishing attack. Um, they were able to, 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 to stop it before any further damage happened, but they, they certainly were attacked. Public Wi-Fi sniffing, right? Who goes to Starbucks and hooks up to the Wi-Fi? Yeah, that's awesome. You can grab all that stuff going across the wire because it's unencrypted. Unless you're using a VPN or something other cool, uh, some other cool technology to block it. But yeah, it's, it's wide open. You can sit there and grab stuff going across the wire, no problem. Um, and not just Starbucks, but any other public Wi-Fi. I'm sure Chick-fil-A has the same thing. Uh, smartphone malware, computer malware. You downloaded something, you downloaded software, you went to a website, right? Um, reuse of old social security numbers, you know. People who have been born here in the last 50, 60, 70, 80 years, they die. Well, what did they get when they were born if they were born in the States? Social security number. Do they reuse social security numbers? Absolutely. So, uh, you know, dead people don't just register to vote. They also have social security numbers. So how do you fix it, right? So we've talked about all these problems. Well, if I'm up here and I'm giving you, talking about problems, but I'm not providing a solution, you know what I'm doing? I'm whining. I don't want to whine. Let's, let's fix this. So how do we go about it? So we're going to talk in depth about each of these bullets. So you want to assess the potential damage. You know, what, is, what, is your, what is your risk profile look like? How bad could it be? Right? You want to put a 90-day fraud alert on your credit file. That's one of the first things you do. If you can determine that you actually were breached, you put a freeze on your credit file. You notify your banks or your financial institutions. You definitely change passwords or personal identification numbers. File a police report. I cannot stress how important this is. We'll get into the details on that. Monitor your bank and credit cards for account changes or, or, or weird, weird transactions. And most of all, be proactive. Um, so we'll talk about those steps. So assess the damage. So try to determine the source of the compromise. If you got a letter from Target or from Home Depot that said, hi, thank you for being a valued customer. By the way, your information was compromised. Okay. Now you know the, 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 the origin of the attack. It's kind of hard to deal with when it's something coming through social media or something else. So that's, but you still want to go through the effort and try and see what does is, what is your profile look like. Think, think about all the information you've posted all over the place. Now, verify which cards have been compromised. I knew that when my wallet was stolen, I had two credit cards and a debit card. I knew that my primary checking card was not in there, so I could go ahead and exclude that. So now I'm I have limited the scope of things that I need to look at. Determine the length of compromise. You know, there might be a weird charge on your credit card that's been going on there for months. You have no idea what it is because it's only five cents, and I don't really have time to look at that five cent charge. It's a nuisance. I'll just pay it. In the meantime, they've not only done that to you, they've done it to thousands of other people who really don't care about that nickel charge. And by the way, that's somebody sitting back collecting all those nickels over time. All right, so that, that adds up. So take a very close look at that. And how long did it go on? Hey, I didn't notice this nickel charge there a year ago. It's only been there for about three months. Well, you've got a pretty good idea when your account may have been breached. Um, get the contact information. You know, if, if you bank with 
with Wells Fargo, make sure you have that information. Make sure that you know the contact information of all your credit card providers or your, your financial institutions. Keep, I can't stress this one enough either, keep a pen and paper handy for notes. I know all of us are great texters and typers and everything, but that doesn't really work when your phone's been stolen. So keep pen and paper handy to write down notes when you're on the phone with people. Um, and create a timeline because you're going to need this eventually for the police report. and It's going to make things a lot easier to go through. So I noticed it on this day. I did this. I did this. I did this. Keep a, a, a diary, a timeline of, of the events. So that's going to help you triage this. <clears throat> Contact the credit bureaus and put a 90-day fraud alert on your credit report. That's the first thing you should do. Who are the three credit bureaus? Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. If you haven't heard of them, I, I highly recommend getting this information. Every one of us has heard the, the, the really silly jingle, freecreditreport.com, right? That's Experian. So um, they, they're pretty good on their marketing. Um, what this 90-day fraud alert will do, and you can put that on there. All you have to do is call them and say, I think I've been a victim of identity theft. Please put this on there. If you call one, all three of them will pick it up. And so what that's going to do is it's going to require creditors that when they pull credit, they have to do something extra. If they don't, they're in violation of law. They can face some very serious fines and penalties. And the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau just loves going after these, these retailers. So they have to do extra steps to check your identity. They're going to have three or four forms of identification. You may have a PIN, but that's whenever anything happens to your credit, like opening a new account, adding another card, or you know, extending credit limit, so they have to check on those things a little bit harder than what they normally would do. It is free for 90 days. Now, if you are sure that you've been breached, then you want to file a, credit report, a, a, a police report. If you have a police report, you can freeze your credit forever. And you, you can freeze it and thaw it and freeze it and thaw it as needed. But that's a right that you have with a police report. So remember when I said that police report's really handy? That's something you should definitely look into. freezing your credit report. So it absolutely prevents third parties from pulling your credit. They cannot pull it. Not just an alert, it blocks them. And so if you are a victim of identity theft, you've got a letter, you've got a police report, definitely a letter from a vendor, and you send that to the credit bureau, They will, and you request that freeze, they will put it on it. They will give you a PIN number. For goodness sakes, do not lose this PIN number. They'll give you a PIN number so that anytime somebody tries to pull credit on you, they have to have that PIN before they can pull credit on you. That's very important. Had I had that in place, then I wouldn't have this wonderful account at Foot Locker right now. Um, you can do this with any of the three bureaus. I happen to know which one Equifax was, was and it's freeze.equifax.com. So if, if you're a victim there and you have this information, go ahead and put that freeze on there because it will definitely stop the bleeding. Notify your bank, notify your financial institutions. In my case, I knew which credit cards they were. I had their 1-800 numbers written down at home, so I immediately contacted them. You can contact them online, too. Uh, my debit card, I knew which bank it was. Again, I had that information uh, written down. Most of your cards have a 1-800 number on the back of them, or you can, probably, you can probably search that on the Internet. I find it a good thing just to, just to write them down because <laughs> you can't call the 1-800 number on your card if your card's been physically stolen. So um, you want to keep that in a, in a, a separate documentation of that. Uh, have your account number handy when you're talking to the bank because they're going to want to, that's going to help speed up the process. So have that written down somewhere safe. Um, in my case, they probably won't be able, you probably won't be able to dispute the charges unless they've actually hit. In my case, I knew I lost a wallet. I knew that things were coming because I started seeing the, the transaction history. But there was one charge at a store at Lenox that I could not dispute because it actually hadn't hit my account. So I had to sit there and wait around until that thing actually hit, and then the bank could actually reverse that charge. So just be aware of that. Change your passwords. Change your pins. We just talked about the Yahoo breach, right? Everybody's emails that had a Yahoo account, there's a good chance that your password has been breached. So change your password, change your Wi-Fi password, if, if, if it was affected by, if Wi-Fi was in fact the, the source of the breach, 
if your home Wi-Fi wasn't the source of, a bre of the breach, you don't necessarily have to change that one, right? You want to focus on the problem, not go crazy and change everything. But that's why that, 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 that understanding of what happened is important. Now, if you, if you don't really know, then yeah, by all means, go ahead and change it. Um, any pins on your bank cards. Now, that, when you, if you get a new bank card issue, your bank will require you to change your pin. So the one, two, three, four pin that you've had since high school, yeah, they're going to make you change that. Um, get a secondary email account. It's funny that I list Yahoo here, but get a secondary email account that was... Uh, that is that you know has not been compromised, like a Gmail or a, a new Yahoo account that you can you can use to communicate with if your other email account has been compromised. And send a remote kill to your smartphone. You ever done that? Remote bricked your smartphone, your fart smartphone's been stolen and it's gone. You don't know where to get it. Have your service provider rem remote brick it. That means they send a kill message to it and it will basically turn it into a brick. It is no longer usable. So make sure you, if if your smartphone's been stolen. Have them remotely brick it. Because who keeps everything on their smartphone? Right? Who has their very important things like their, their, their Pizza Hut order preference stored? Right? Okay, so we don't want that information getting out. File a police report. It's very important that you file the police report in the jurisdiction where the crime was committed. Now, if it's you at your house, file it there. You can file it with, in our case, with Cobb PD. You can probably file it with, if it happened on campus, File it with Kennesaw State Police. Uh, in, 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 in my case, where my wallet was stolen, I filed it with the Capitol Police. And that was a good thing. Um, but you've got to have this police report. Get the case number and the officer who's taking the report. You will need this later to, re to refer back to it. Um, get a hard copy of it. Banks and credit bureaus are going to want this hard copy. Most importantly, if your driver's license is stolen, the Georgia DDS will not issue you a new license number without a police report. Right? They'll give you a new license. You can change your picture on it. Instead of looking like this, you can be nice and smiley. But the number will remain the same. So you, you, if your license has been stolen, you have to have a police report to get a new license number. Uh, and most importantly, create a consumer theft report, identity theft report with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB. Because when you do that, you automatically have access to additional rights and resources that you didn't have beforehand. So it's very important that you follow this step. <clears throat> and then you get into monitoring mode. So monitor your accounts, right? Um, <laughs> use online bank accounts from a safe device and network, for goodness sakes. If your laptop has been compromised or your network has been compromised, don't use that same laptop or network until you're absolutely sure it's safe. Use a different device. Um, keep track of the fraudulent charges or even attempts to. So their chances are, it's kind of funny, when, uh, when my credit card was breached or one of my credit cards was breached, they kept trying. So I caught them by mid-morning. I, I, I called uh, American Express and they got the card locked. But that didn't stop them from continuing to try to, 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 to charge up things. And it's kind of funny if you, if you looked at the, uh, this will also help later if there's a, ever a police investigation that I could kind of track which stores they were going to in the mall based on the mall map. It was, it was really kind of neat. Uh, didn't go after sur surveillance cameras or anything like that. The police were like, yeah, just, just lock it and you know, they'll reverse the charges. So, um, but definitely watch that because you, the continued attacks will, will let you know how smart they are. Uh, absolutely dispute the, the fraudulent charges. You don't owe those charges. If it's a credit card, you are not responsible for those charges. So absolutely dispute those. Send any paper, if you're gonna send paperwork or copies of the reports to a bank, use, send it using certified mail. Not that the banks aren't honest and ethical, and would never do anything like setting up fake accounts, Wells Fargo, um, but always use certified mail when you send these things. And keep a file on it. Keep a paper file on it. Get you a folder and start filing everything related to this. So, so keep this information. And let's be proactive. So what can I do? Every year, you're entitled to a free credit report. 
not your credit score, but your credit report. If you go to the one that's the jingle, freecreditreport.com, that they're going to sell you something. The one that you can get from all three bureaus, which is called a tri-bureau report, is from annualcreditreport.com. That's actually run by the federal government, so you can go to annualcreditreport.gov as well. That's the only site that actually gives you a free credit report. You're entitled to one annually under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. If you have spouses, if you have kids, pull it on them every year. Keep monitoring service. So if, let's say you don't feel comfortable with the locks and the freezes and everything else. You can use another company that will, that will actually lock and monitor your credit. All three bureaus sell you extra products to, to do this. LifeLock will sell you a product that will do this. And I'm not endorsing any of these things. I'm just saying that's another option for you to consider. Keep separate email accounts for business and, and, and pleasure, right? I have one Gmail account, but that's what I use when I do online purchases. I absolutely do not give that out to anybody else for any kind of other kind of communications. These are free accounts, folks. I mean, so, so kind of you know, leverage this and, 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 and keep things separate. Shred <laughs> your documents. Shred your, if you don't need to keep your, your, your statements and whatnot, shred them. And get a cross-cut shredder. Don't get some old crinkly shredder or burn them in a burn barrel, but shred these things. Don't, don't leave them out there for dumpster divers. Do not transmit sensitive information over unsecured networks. Plain and simple. Don't, if you're going to Starbucks and you're going to be on their Wi-Fi, unless you are on a VPN or something else, be very cautious of the information that you transmit over these wireless networks. Deactivate old social media accounts, right? All right, show of hands. Who has, who has a MySpace page? It's like the abandoned amusement park of the internet, right? So MySpace was recently compromised. So if you've, if you've got an old MySpace page sitting out there, go back and if you can remember your credentials, lock in and take that information off. It's, 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 it's just free fodder for anybody out there trying to, trying to get your information. And of course, be careful with, with email links that, hey, click on this link, we'll send you all kinds of wonderful things including an identity theft. So, uh, like I said, one of our schools in the USG was recently subject to this, and they, they were pretty successful. We had over 3,000 accounts that were compromised uh, through, through a very good phishing attack. So, be wary of this. Set a password for your home Wi-Fi. Who bought that, who bought that, uh, that Wi-Fi router from Office Depot and plugged it in, and yay, it works, and you didn't change anything on it? Yeah, your neighbors are thanking you because they're surfing on your Wi-Fi. Uh, don't use the same password. As a matter of fact, use passphrases, but don't use ABC123 for your password across everything that you use. You know, change it up a little bit. Use strong passwords. Now, I know I, I threw the eight character alphanumeric. That's a standard that's out there. By goodness means this is, this is go stronger than that. That's like a, a, a minimum that you should consider. Uh, put, a, put a pin on your smartphone. Who's, who can still just swipe the screen and unlock their iPhone? Yeah, so if it's gone, they're, getting your, they're going to get your Pizza Hut information, so be careful. Uh, put yourself, this is a good one that, that uh, I learned while I was working at Equifax. Put yourself on the do not call, do not advertise list that you can file with with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. It will take you off the phone call list for telemarketers and scammers who, by the way, their databases aren't necessarily the most secure either, so that's a wonderful target waiting to be hacked. Uh, take yourself off that list. That's, that's something that you have as, as, as a consumer. That's the right you have. Uh, if any military folks, okay, if you're going on active duty, call the bureaus and put an active duty alert on your credit report. That way when you're overseas, be it, you know, Middle East or Far East or Europe, that people aren't back home in Kennesaw opening up accounts in your name. All right, so put an active duty alert. Um, and definitely review your rights under, the, 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 under federal law. Any questions at this point? Have I sufficiently scared you? Or have I sufficiently, sufficiently informed you? Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, can we get a list of the last provided? Absolutely. I'll, I'll, absolutely. I'll provide those to uh, Mr. Stephen Gay. He's the Chief Information Security Officer here at Kennesaw State and a good friend. I'll be glad to send those to him, and however he wants to distribute those, he's, he's welcome to. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is that reversible in this 
No. If you do a remote kill, well, it, de it depends on the vendor and depends on the phone. The question is, can you remote kill a smartphone? Your vendor can do that for you. So if it's Verizon or AT&T or Sprint, they have the capability to send a remote wipe remote kill to your phone. Now, if it's a more modern phone, if it's something, if it's an old flip phone type thing, I don't know. But most vendors have that. As, they'll, they'll charge you for it, but that is a service that they can provide. No, once you remote brick something, it, it is literally a brick. It's, it's dead. And so enjoy that new phone that you're going to have to get. And yeah, I hope all you had all your pictures backed up to iCloud and all that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Gotta love Georgia. So. Yes, sir. Hey, guys, so what are your thoughts on like NFC payments and um, like Apple Pay? And well, if, if, so the question is what are my thoughts on payment technologies like Apple Pay? I think if your phone is secure, then the, as long as you've got pins and protections on your, your phone, it should be secure. So when it comes to payment card technology, the companies that are putting things out these days, some, some more of the newer stuff like Square, whatnot, they're having to go through a pretty rigorous compliance check before they're allowed to put these apps and devices out in the wild. Does that mean that they're all absolutely 100% safe? No. Usually the big, the big brands, though, tend to be a little bit safer than, than, than Billy Bob's Server Shack putting these apps out. So no offense to Billy Bob's Server Shack, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's no different than having a credit card in your wallet. If, if, you're, if you're unsafe with your phone, if you're doing things on your phone you probably shouldn't be doing, might not be such a great idea to store that sensitive information there. Yes, sir. So, follow up. So, what are your feelings on, like, banks and people are giving the customer uh, hacked data? So, actually buying back hacked credit card data that they could buy from this person to identify You know, I think what they're trying to do is to, is to triage the best they can. Uh, I don't think they're necessarily doing it for nefarious purposes. Uh, on the one, I mean, so I guess you got to consider what are what are the what are the motivations here? Are they are they financing the own ha they're the hacking industry doing this? I don't know. That's a good question. Are they are they using it to to solve some of their own problems and find some of their own weaknesses to triage it? I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, I think that would be a good question for the banks. Fortunately, I'm in higher ed. I'm not in banking. So I guess to answer your question, I think it depends on motivation. Any other questions? Hearing none, I will relinquish the stage. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here.